Hey, welcome to the private pilot uh, flight test presentation that I've created for you to help you mentally prepare for your private pilot flight test. If you have not already read through the private pilot license flight test guide, I highly recommend you stop watching this and go read it first and then watch this video after. Having a clear understanding of what you will be tested on will greatly help you through the flight test. So the first thing I want to talk about is the flight management part of the flight test. And we tend to focus quite a bit on the actual flight exercises themselves because on your flight test examination sheet, that's where all the little grading circles get filled in. And what we talk about less is the other stuff that is also being evaluated at the same time uh, as the air exercises. And flight management refers to the effective use of all available resources and poor performance of an exercise or task can often be explained by weakness in the flight management competencies. So the first thing I want to talk about is how do you as a pilot think and make decisions? Do you actively look for threats? Do you use a process for your decision making? And is that process sound? Do you ask the right questions? Do you consider consequences? Good decision making represents a holistic understanding of what it takes to get an airplane safely up in the air and safely back down again. The next one is situational awareness, and this is very important when it comes to all things aviation. Are you paying attention to what is happening out there on the ramp, inside the plane, with weather, workload, and ATC? Do you fixate on things, and how do you manage your increased workload? Situational awareness means paying attention to all things happening all the time and all around you. Make sure that you are not flying around inside of a mental bubble. The next is communication. How do you take in and process information and how do you get your message out clearly? Think before you speak and obtain confirmation that what you said has been understood. The last is workload management. And this ties into situational awareness. Keeping an eye out for things helps to manage workload. And when your workload suddenly increases, you should have a plan to manage it. And above all, fly the plane first. Aviate, then navigate, then communicate in that order. Now let's talk about airmanship. This is the quality that is kind of asking, are you really in control of this flight? Do you know what to do and when? And evidence of good airmanship are things like looking out for other aircrafts, using your checklist, um, consideration for other aircraft on the ground, in the taxi area and in the air, your choice of run-up areas, your choice of runways, if it's uncontrolled airport and clearing the engine during prolonged glides. These are all examples of airmanship decisions that you will be expected to make. And these are just a few examples of what good airmanship would look like. So keep in mind that you're not only being evaluated on the exercises, you are also being evaluated on your flight management and your airmanship skills as well. So if we take a high level look at the ground items, you know by now that you're going to be evaluated on the following items here on your left. And essentially the reason you're being evaluated on these things is to answer these questions. Is the airplane that I have legal to fly? Do I know enough about it in order to be able to fly it? Do I know how to load it properly? And can I safely take it from A to B? So the ground portion is really just asking, does the candidate know how to answer or know the answer to these four questions, can they answer correctly? And the examiner will also take a look at your navigation log to make sure that you can safely plan a flight and understand the area that you fly in, things like airspace limitations and geography, meteorological factors, as well as how to load the aircraft and fuel requirements that will play a role. And if the examiner is satisfied, you can answer those four questions on the right, then he will move on to the air exercises or the in-flight portion of the flight test. So the pre-flight inspection and the engine start, run up, and use of checklists is really just verifying that you know how to use a checklist. So make sure that you read the checklist slowly and meticulously to ensure that you do not miss any items. It would be a shame to have a checklist and not use it properly when it's right there for you to use as a tool. The pre-flight inspection should be done first as a flow and then go back and verify everything with the checklist. So before you even get into the airplane, make sure that you cover these items on the checklist, especially the passenger brief. 
which might be easy to miss since you usually don't brief your instructor before going on a flight. The operation of aircraft systems part of the flight test is relatively straightforward. You should know by now how to operate all of the systems in your aircraft. The examiner might ask about the aircraft and its systems to verify your knowledge. You don't have to memorize the entire QOH to get a pass on this, but you should definitely have read it by now and know where to find the information uh, should you need to know more about it. Okay, now that we've looked at that portion, let's look at the air exercises. So the flight test will go through an evaluation of all of the air exercises you should have covered with your flight instructor, from taxiing, steep turns, upper air work, including slow flight, power off and power on stalls, spiral recovery, slipping, takeoff, circuit and landing, overshoots, precautionary landings, forced approach on both the glide into the field and how you perform your cause checks, and your briefings while flying the approach, your navigation technique, including departure, en route navigation, and then your diversion navigation exercise, instrument flying with a full panel, recovery from unusual attitudes while under the hood with a full panel, emergency procedure knowledge, and finally, radio communication. All the while simultaneously evaluating your airmanship and flight management as was discussed earlier. So there is a lot of material to evaluate here and don't stress too much, just fly the plane like you have been trained to do. If you've been recommended for your flight test, it means that at some point you've been witnessed handling the aircraft in all of these air exercises to a flight test standard. And so doing so in the flight test is really just demonstrating to someone else who happens to be the flight test examiner that you are able to do what you've already been witnessed to do. Before we move on, let's just briefly discuss the marking scale. So your air exercises will be graded on a four point marking scale with four being the highest mark you can receive on the exercise and one being the lowest. And let's talk about that for a moment. So in order to receive a one, performance of the item is observed to include a critical error or the aim of the flight test item is not achieved. So let's take a look at why and just quickly sum up the reasons an exercise might not might be graded a one as they have provided in the PPL flight test guide. So here is directly from the flight test guide, the reasons for the grading of a one on a flight test exercise item. But just to sum up, the reason you might be given a one is because you have lost control of the aircraft or control of the aircraft is in doubt. By this point, you should be able to maintain control at all times during all of the maneuvers, just as you have done in your flight training. Demonstrating unacceptable level of knowledge. Again, by this point, you have been trusted with taking the aircraft on solo flights and you should be aware of your aircraft systems and the performance characteristics of your airplane. Lapse of situational awareness. This one is really big. Don't get too caught up in your head over an exercise or overthink something. Always keep your awareness of where you are and what you are doing at all times. Flight management skills are ineffective, indecisive, or non-compliant would be another reason. And finally, compromising on safety, which is something that we should never do in any flight. So if it happens that one or more of these things are observed, then it may result in a one being granted by the flight examiner. And this indicates a failure of that specific flight test item. Unfortunately, the failure of any singular flight test exercise constitutes a failure of the entire flight test. However, the failure of one or two air items would require only a partial flight test on those items, whereas the failure of a third or more air items will require a complete retest of the flight test. So just remember that if you do receive a one on your flight test, that it's not the end of the world. It's really not. It just means that you require more training on that item until you have sufficient skill as required to be granted the private pilot license that you seek. Now that we have looked at what unsuccessful completion of an exercise looks like, 
let's actually take a look at successful completion of each exercise and how to achieve a four on a graded item, which is the highest mark that you can get. One of my favorite quotes is to aim for the moon and you will land among the stars. So let's take a look at what shooting for the moon looks like. And it looks like smooth handling of the aircraft, demonstrating a thorough level of knowledge, maintaining situational awareness at all times, managing the flight, anticipating and managing threats, and maintaining safety margins. So from a high level view, looks not hard to do. Let's take a step back and get more into detail on how each air exercise is going to be evaluated. So each of these exercises is going to be evaluated and I just want you to remember that generally you'll want to be within a specific metric for kind of all of them. I can refer to it as like general performance criteria. All of the exercises have a bit more of a specific criteria, but generally if you keep your altitude to within plus or minus 100 feet of the target, your airspeed to within plus or minus 10 knots of the target, angle of bank to between plus and minus 10 degrees of target, except for slow flight where it's only five degrees, and heading maintenance and rollouts onto heading within plus or minus 10 degrees. These, if you keep all of your flight exercises and all of your flying within these general metrics, then you should do relatively well on all of the exercises and obtain, you know, at least a three in, um, in performance. One thing I do want to say though is please, please do not fixate on the instruments. Um, that will definitely not be the best way to fly the plane. Just kind of glance down periodically to see if you're within, but if your eyes are out that, um, out on the outside, you'll be able to tell relatively well, um, whether or not you're maintaining heading, you'll be able to tell relatively well whether or not you're maintaining altitude. So remember to keep your eyes out and just do not fixate on those instruments while you're trying to maintain that general performance criteria. So just a couple of things that I've probably already said, uh, don't stress too much. And before your flight test and during your flight test, remind yourself that you control the airplane. The airplane doesn't control you. So you tell it what to do and uh, it will respond to you. Do not allow yourself to get too preoccupied with items that you've already completed. Keep your mind in the moment. Uh, if you mess up, just try to let it go and focus on the next, next task. Don't the, the distraction of that item, how well you did or how not well you did, um, distract you from the next task that you have to do. Um, if you are asked a question by the examiner and you don't know the answer, do not make something up. Usually they're doing, they're asking these questions to as a knowledge verification. Um, if you make up something, they will know that it's wrong. You can try an educated guess, um, but uh, just let them know that um, the reasoning for your thinking and you might get partial marks for that and above all don't melt or have a meltdown don't get overwhelmed by uh task saturation just breathe take a moment reset and uh, if you need to take more time to get set up for an exercise you can take that time a flight test is not a race uh, again don't fix that on the instruments they're sometimes they're just to tell you what happened as opposed to what's happening 